So um, make sure you're spending uh, more time, right? Or setting aside more time to actually work on your project one as you're doing it. Uh, I do have a tendency to make these things look real easy, you guys. And I have a tendency to work a lot faster. It's like I've done this a bajillion times. Um, and that's probably not, um, <laughs> it's probably not exaggerating. Uh, I think I, I probably have done this a, a gajillion times. So, uh, so I could do all of Project 1 in a matter of an hour or so. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you're setting aside a lot more time to do these things because chances are it's the first time you've done these things in Photoshop, right? We're not expecting you to know anything about Photoshop as you're doing this. So, um, so uh, I like, by the way, the editing that I did up until this point. I have not yet saved. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit save to my layered working file. Uh, I have my new sky, I have my background, my background's completely untouched. Um, the next thing uh, I'm going to want to do um, is not start editing. I know that your project description is, is having you uh, do some editing and some, some things along the way, but, uh, but I'm actually going to do um, my levels adjustments first. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my background layer. Uh, you'll notice that this building looks very flat, looks very gray. Um, the blacks are, um, actually the blacks really aren't that bad uh, in this original scan. Uh, we haven't made it too hard on you. Um, if you're scanning an image in the, from the lab um, and you're scanning it yourself, specifically East Campus, uh, you'll notice that you've got a lot more um, levels adjustments. Uh, so what levels are, right? It's referencing the levels of blacks, right? The levels of grays, the levels or amount or darkness of the shadows, the amount or darkness of the midtone grays in the image, and also um, it's, it's referencing the highlights. Um, I want to point out to you that right now this image, uh, it does have some nice dark shadows going on. Uh, it also has some midtones. Uh, I'm noticing that there's a good amount of detail in those areas. Um, and the highlights have some good details. Uh, areas that should probably be brighter, right, look kind of gray. Uh, areas that should probably be darker uh, look dark gray, right? So we, um, we're going to add a little bit more contrast between the shadows and the highlights, but we're going to do this in a way that is not sacrificing the detail that we can see with our eyes in these areas. So uh, we're going to want to make sure uh, that as we're making adjustments, we're not over adjusting. Yeah, because if we over adjust or make the shadows too dark, we lose the detail. If we over adjust and make the highlights too white, we also lose that detail. So, uh, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a levels adjustment layer to my background, which is my building, uh, and adjust the levels of grays in my background. To do this, I'm going to go to the layer pull down menu, and I'm going to add a new adjustment layer to this building background, right? The key is that I have selected the background layer because that is the one that I want to add this adjustment layer to, yes? Um, so I'm gonna go to new adjustment layer and I'm gonna select the option called levels. Um, and when I select levels, it's gonna ask me to give it a, a name. I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to call it levels and click okay. And by uh, default, Photoshop will open a properties panel for me. And this properties panel shows me a chart called a histogram, and this chart is showing me a little uh, triangle here for my shadows, a little triangle here for my midtones, and a little triangle here for my highlights. Now, there are ways, if you'd like, to use these eyedroppers to make some automatic adjustments to your shadows and your highlights. I, however, prefer to do this with my own eyeballs and using my better judgment. Um, because I just don't trust any automated processes. Maybe I'm old school like that in Photoshop. So uh, I'm looking at this little slider right here and I'm seeing there's a gap. There's a gap between what is considered dark and where the blacks truly start in the image. You see that difference when I, when I grab the shadow slider and I make it closer to the edge of where the true blacks actually begin in this image, you'll notice that things like the shadows, things that should be black, are now true black, right? I'm going to keep it a little bit further away from the edge because I don't want those getting too dark. Yeah. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the highlights, but holy mother of gaps right here. You see the huge difference between this highlight and where the highlights or the whites truly begin in the image. Holy cow. Can, now, your brain was probably telling you there's nothing wrong with those highlights, but as soon as you grab this highlight slider in pull it in so that the highlights are whites, yeah, are truly white, you can start to see a huge difference between this, flat and gray, and this, a little bit more contrast, 
I have increased the brightness of the highlights without losing the detail over here, you guys, right? I'm especially looking at this right here. If I pull this slider in even further, watch out. Now there's no detail and everything that should have information and it's just bright white it doesn't it doesn't look very um it doesn't look very convincing or real it looks like i've been editing this center slider is for the midtones right now uh there's an awful lot of uh, imbalance between the shadows and the highlights so i'm just going to modify or move this midtone slider around so you can see if the midtones were darker yeah i can actually make them too dark Notice I, there's no detail in the tree, zero detail. I can't see a single lump or highlight or shadow in those trees right now. So I'm definitely not going to want to make the midtones too much darker. Um, and same thing, I'm not going to want to make them bright because see how that affects my highlights by making my midtones too bright. So I'm going to make very subtle adjustments here. Yes, very subtle adjustments. Um, I want uh, there to be some nice shadows, uh, but I don't want those adjustments to my midtones to. Um, to ruin or to make the uh, detail in those shadows too dark and I don't want the highlights to be uh, blown out either. So um, yeah, levels adjustments. I want to point out to you that this is only changing the building. Yes, you do not see the sky changing here, you guys, right? Nobody sees the sky changing. There's a reason why and that is because this levels adjustment layer is above my background layer. You guys see that? The levels adjustments will only be applied, I should, shouldn't say only, the levels adjustments layers will be applied to all layers below that levels adjustments layer. So any layers that are above that levels adjustment layer are not being affected. Yes, this is going to be an important thing to keep in mind because I need to also adjust the levels that are within my sky. Yeah, but I need to do it in a way that is not also adjusting the building which is below the sky in my layers so check it out i close this properties panel now i'm going to go to my sky and i'm also going to add an adjustment layer to the sky now i have to be very careful doing this when i go to layer new adjustment layer and levels i am not going to be too quick to click ok because right here there's this really vague button that doesn't look important but it is it's called use previous layer to create clipping mask Let's just unpackage that for a second, <laughs> right? This sounds like a foreign language, am I right? Um, what it's saying in, in layman's terms, in, in Photoshop user world terms, is that if I click this button, yes, it is going to create a new adjustment layer, but this new adjustment layer is only going to be attached to the layer I currently have selected and not all layers below it. So I'm going to click OK just so you can see in my layers panel how this adjustment layer looks a little different, right? See this little arrow right here? Yeah, this one doesn't have a little arrow. This one does have this little arrow, and that's because I clicked that little button. And that little arrow means that this layers adjustment is only being, I'll prove it, applied to the sky and not to all layers below the sky. I'm actually going to make this sky a little darker, yeah? Kind of like really brighten up the highlights, but make the midtones get added, give it some contrast that seems to match, I think, the building. Remember, this this sky and this building were photographed on two completely different days. So of course I'm gonna need an adjustment layer applied to the sky and to the building totally different. So um, so right, uh, that's kind of important that I can click that button and make sure that I am not uh, adjusting the sky and the adjustment and the background because if, if I didn't click that button, this very top levels adjustment layer would be adjusting every single thing below it, including the other levels adjustment layer. So my poor building would be adjusted and adjusted again because there would be two levels adjustment layers above it being applied to it. So that really important button, yes, don't ignore that little thing. Uh, it, it matters, uh, that little uh, levels adjustment button there. So, all right, so I made one little adjustment here, right? I kind of made the shadows a little bit darker in my sky. Play around with that though until you're satisfied that your, your sky is matching. Maybe you want it to be like a super bright sunny day, right? That's okay, ooh, I kind of like that better, not gonna lie. Uh, I think that, that it makes the sun, the bright sun on the front of that building look even more convincing with a really super bright sunny sky. Uh, so, uh, so I'm gonna make it even brighter and sunnier and make these highlights even brighter, yeah, right? Um, so play around with it, 
So you think that the sky and the weather conditions of the sky is matching um, the lighting conditions that are on the building. Once you're done, don't forget to save, right? If you like your changes, hit save before you move on to the next step.